Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to be going over standard electrode potentials. So let's get into this. So in the last video we talked about standard cell potentials and how those standard cell potentials depend on what the half reactions are. And so when we're thinking about the two half reactions, the two half cells that we have, we can think of the electrode in each of the half cells as having its own potential and we call that potential the standard electrode potential. So the standard electrode, the overall standard cell potential, right? So the overall standard potential, this is what we call the E, e cell with a circle naught, uh, is the difference between the two standard electrode potentials. So again, you can think of each electrode having its own like particular charge. And remember what we said, that the larger the difference between the charge on the electrodes, the greater that potential. And so um, a more a tendency to flow toward from one electrode to the other. And so um, if we think of each half cell, so each half cell in an electrochemical cell. So again, the electrochemical cell is uh, where the two, uh, like we have the two, um, half reactions happening in two beakers and they're connected by a wire to some other part, like say, for example, they're connected to a light bulb or a motor or a voltmeter or something like that, right? So you've got this circuit that's connected. That's your, your, your cell, um, your electrolytic cell. And then each beaker, if you will, each side of the electrolytic cell is your half cell. So each half cell has an electrode in in the electrochemical cell has its own charge and corresponding electrode potential. So when the cells are connected, when you connect those cells together, the electrons are then going to flow, right? So you've completed the circuit. The electrons are gonna flow from the electrode that has a more negative charge. So the more negative charge, so again, think Coulomb's law, this is gonna have higher potential electron, negative electrons, if they're at a, an electrode that has a more negative charge, right? So then they're going to repel each other more strongly. So they're going to move away from the more negative electrode. So that means greater potential energy, right? So everything wants to move from greater potential energy to lesser potential energy. So everything wants to kind of go downhill towards lower energy. And so here we have to remember that negative charge, a more negative charge on the electrode is more potential energy. So electrons are going to flow from the, low, the high potential energy to uh, lower potential energy. So the negative charge means more negative charge means greater potential energy. So they're going to go from the more negative charge electrode with uh, to the electrode that has less negative charge and that's going to have less potential energy. Okay. So that's the way we, we can remember the flow of the electrons. They're going to go from the more negative to the less negative electrode. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind is that we cannot measure, we cannot measure the electrode potentials directly, right? That is not something we're able to measure directly. We can't hook up something and then measure directly what the potential is. So we need to get relative electrode potential. So that means we're going to need to choose a standard of some sort and then compare everything else to that standard. This is kind of the same thing we did uh, with the periodic table and molar masses, right? So we chose carbon 12 as our standard and everything is compared to carbon 12. The molar masses of all the other elements are relative to the what we chose the molar mass of, of carbon. And so in the same way, we, we need to, uh, we, we can only measure the overall cell potential. And so we can measure the uh, voltage across uh, from one cell to the other and measure the, um, the, the uh, total cell potential or the overall cell, cell potential of the two half cells when they're combined. But we can't directly measure the, uh, the uh, potential, the electrode potential of either half cell. So what we need to do 
is we arbitrarily assign a potential of zero to an electrode of some sort as the standard, right? So we choose an electrode as our standard and we're gonna assign that zero and then compare everything else to that, okay? So what is the standard uh, electrode that was chosen? That is called the standard hydrogen electrode or SHE, SHE, okay? So what is the standard hydrogen electrode? That is an inert platinum electrode that's immersed in one molar HCl uh, with H2 gas at one atmosphere bubbling through the solution. So you have a reaction of the hydrogen uh, plus, and then that's going to be um, reacting to form hydrogen gas at one atmosphere. And you have one molar HCl. And so here's the reaction that would be happening at, at this electrode, at the uh, standard hydrogen electrode, where two hydrogen plus uh, atom or uh, ions pick up two electrons from the inert platinum uh, electrode, and it forms H2 gas. And so they've, uh, we've assigned uh, this uh, of a, a zero voltage. So the electrode potential of this particular electrode is zero. That's our standard. And we're going to base everything off of that. So now what I'm going to do next is I'll go over a couple of examples and kind of uh, show how this is done. Okay, so here I have an example of a uh, standard electrolytic cell or electrochemical cell, I should say. And so here I have two half reactions connected together. So here I have as the cathode, I have the standard hydrogen electrode. So here's my platinum uh, electrode and I've got uh, HCl, I've got hydrogen plus ions here and I got hydrogen gas in this tube, okay? And over here, I've hooked the standard uh, hydrogen electrode with another electrode, zinc. So here, um, I, have it connected, I have it connected to a voltmeter and it's reading 0 0.76. So the 0 0.76 here is the cell potential, the standard cell potential of the, the whole cell, the whole uh, electro, uh, electrochemical cell that I have here drawn on the board. And so again, I, uh, just like before I have my salt bridge. And so here, this is where oxidation is occurring. So oxidation is occurring here where the zinc electrode is, um, has, uh, zinc atoms and those zinc atoms are, uh, picking, are giving away the electrons they are undergoing oxidation. So they're giving away their electrons. They're going to send electrons through the wire. So here we have the electrons going this way. And so they're going through the voltmeter and then they're going to come over here. And then we have our reduction where the H plus is going to pick up the electrons at the surface of our platinum electrode. And it's going to form H2 gas, which can bubbles in the tube here. Um, so we have reduction, we have reaction. So what we can do is we can figure out what the standard electrode potential of this one is compared to the standard uh, hydrogen electrode. And so since we have this hooked up and since we know from the voltmeter what the overall cell potential is, we can figure out what the, uh, what the electrode potential of our other electrode is compared to the standard hydrogen electrode. And one thing to keep in mind is that the electrons are going to flow from the anode to the cathode. They're going to flow from uh, the more negative to the less negative electrode. And so here, what we can calculate what the electrode potential of this one by plugging it into here. So uh, if we understand, if we define the cell potential, the standard cell potential as the final uh, potential minus the initial potential. 
And so what are these, what is this final initial potential that we're talking about? Well, that is the final and initial potential of our electrodes, right? So here we have uh, our electrons start here. They're going to flow from here. So this is our initial uh, potential. So the electrons at this electrode is going to have a certain potential based on whatever the potential of this electrode is. So that's where they begin. And if this is more negative, then they're going to flow away from the negative because negative repels the negative. So electrons are negative. If this is more negative, they're going to flow away from the more negative electrode. So if they flow this way, this would be the initial and they're going to flow towards the cathode where reduction occurs. And so this is our final. So if we define the cell potential, the standard cell potential as the uh, final standard potential minus the initial uh, standard potential of the electron, then we can calculate what, uh, what the electrode potential is going to be. And we can, um, if we know these two, we can figure out what the cell potential is. Um, so since the final uh, standard uh, potential is going to be at the cathode because the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, because at the cathode, that's where reduction occurs. And so if we uh, replace the final electrode potential with cathode, so that's going to be cathode minus the anode where we began. So this would be the definition of the standard cell potential. And so if we know what the standard cell potential is here, because we're measuring it on a voltmeter, and we know that this standard uh, standard hydrogen electrode is zero because we defined it that way under standard conditions, then we can plug that in. So for this standard cell potential, that's 0 0.76, which we got from the voltmeter, which is the whole potential of this uh, cell that we're looking at. And then we know that the standard hydrogen electrode is zero. So we plug that in because that's our cathode. That's where the reduction is occurring. And then we have our uh, anode. And so we solve this for our anode and we find that the uh, standard electrode potential at the anode is a negative 0 0.76 voltage. So, so that means the anode is at a more negative voltage, which means a higher potential energy. So the electrons at the anode have a higher, uh, higher potential energy because it's a more negative electrode. So they're going to flow away from the higher potential energy. And so they're going to spontaneously flow from the anode, which has a higher uh, potential energy, more negative, to the cathode, which is less negative and therefore lesser potential energy. So the key here is to remember that the more negative the electrode potential is, the greater the potential energy of an electron at that electrode. And this is because the negative uh, uh, charge of the, of, the, of the electrode is going to repel those electrons. So <laughs> what, if, what if our anode is uh, uh, less uh, negative or more positive? Let's look at an example where uh, that is the case. Okay, so what happens when we connect an electrode in which the electron, rather than having a less positive potential, has a more positive potential uh, than the uh, standard hydrogen electro electrode um, that we were comparing it to? So last time, last time the example was we uh, compared uh, where the electrode that was connected to the standard hydrogen electrode had a uh, more negative uh, potential. And so therefore, the electrons would spontaneously move from the anode to the cathode. So what if we don't try something different? So let's take this example here. So the example that I want to uh, do is we have instead of zinc, we have copper. And so copper, the copper electrode is immersed in one molar solution of a copper two uh, plus ion. 
And so when we measure that, let's just say we measure that uh, like before. So instead, <coughs> uh, we measure these, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we measure the standard cell potential and it's a negative 0 0.34 volts. Okay, so let's look at the uh, information that we have in our cell. Um, I don't have a picture this time, but if you imagine the picture that we just had. Um, so here the anode is going to be the copper anode in a copper two solution. Uh, this is going to be actually more positive voltage, therefore lower potential energy. And so we can show this by the equation again. So here we have the standard potential cell potential is equal to the potential of the cathode minus the potential uh, of the anode, the uh, um, anode. So when we do that, we plug in uh, the cell potential here, so negative three, negative zero point three four volts. The cathode again is the standard hydrogen electrode, so that is given zero. So we have zero, and when we solve this, we get the electrode potential of the anode as a positive point three four volts. So it is a, a positive value rather than a negative value. And so what that means is that an electron that is at the copper electrode uh, that's immersed in the copper to ion solution is going to have a lower potential, uh, lower potential energy. So that means that um, the electron is going to uh, not going to spontaneously go from the anode to the cathode like before. So there's not going to be a spontaneous reaction uh, where the electrons are going to flow from the copper to the, uh, the standard hydrogen electrode. So in order for that to go, we're going to probably have to, have to hook up some sort of power source that's going to make it go and put in the energy to make this happen. So it's not going to happen spontaneously. So this, uh, the thing to remember here is that, again, the more positive electrode <coughs> Excuse me. The more positive the electrode potential, the lower the potential energy of the electron at that electrode. So again, electrons gonna want to go from high potential energy to low potential energy. So if they're already starting at a low potential <coughs> excuse me, if they're already uh, starting at a low potential energy, then they're going, they're not going to go to a higher potential energy. Um, and so that's because the uh, positive charge you know, attracts the electrons. So if they're already at the positive charge and they're not, they're going to leave it. Okay. Um, one last thing I want to cover is um, uh, the way we write our uh, equations to, uh, for our half reactions is Usually when we're talking about the electrode potentials uh, for reactions, we're writing the reactions in the reduc uh, as reduction reactions. And that's just the way that we write them. And uh, so we compare reduction reactions. And so here, if we're looking at uh, the, two, the two examples we were looking at before, we have copper uh, two plus gaining two electrons to be copper solid. And we have zinc two plus uh, gaining two electrons to be a uh, zinc solid here. And so when we look at the electrode potentials of these two reactions, these reduction reactions, we see that the uh, electrode potential, the standard electrode potential of the copper is zero point, is a positive 0 0.34 volts. And we look at the zinc two plus aqueous, that's going to gain two electrons to uh, get zinc solid, and that's going to be a negative 0 0.76. And when we're comparing these two, we see that um, these are going to be compared to the uh, hydrogen, the standard hydrogen electrode, which is zero. And you could see that the electrode potential of the copper is positive compared to the, uh, the standard hydrogen electrode. And so if we remember that the, uh, what we said before, the uh, more positive electrode potential, the lower the potential energy because 
the positive charge attracts the electrons. So if the copper has a more positive uh, electrode potential compared to the hydrogen, the electrons are not going to leave that electrode to go to uh, the hydrogen uh, to go to the hydrogen um, electrode, the standard hydrogen electro, uh, electrode. And so uh, they're not, there's this not going to be a spontaneous reaction there. Uh, but if we compare the zinc, we see that the electrode potential is negative 0 0.76. And so this is <coughs> more negative uh, compared to the, uh, the um, uh, hydrogen electrode, uh, hyd standard hydrogen electrode. So this is negative compared to the st standard hydrogen electrode, which means that the standard hydrogen electrode is positive, and so it's going to attract the electrons. This is more negative, so the electrons are going to be repelled. So this is going to be a spontaneous reaction with this electrode here. And so that's the way to kind of understand how these things work or why one is going to be spontaneous reaction and where the other is not going to be a spontaneous reaction. So I hope this is helpful. If you enjoyed this video, if you like this video, please like, share, and also make sure you hit that like button right there. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell up there. When you hit the notification bell, make sure you hit all so you can be all uh, notified by all my videos. And also, lastly, put a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And if you've got any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.